We're glad to be sharing the ministry of Redemption Church with you. Now join us as we receive the Word of God. Jesus Christ is risen. Amen. He is risen indeed. You see, that's what the church used to say. Let, let, let's practice that a little bit. He is risen. He is risen indeed is how you would respond. Welcome everybody to Redemption Church. Happy Easter. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Greetings to everyone in the room. All you beautiful people in the room, greetings to you. And greetings to all those that are experiencing the Word of God over the internets, over the interwebs, over the Facebook, over all those things that are the series of tubes that is the internet. God bless you guys. Happy Easter to all of you as, of well, as well. We've been in the middle of an unusual sermon series. Can somebody remind me the name of this unusual sermon series? Jesus Loves Meme. Jesus Loves Meme. That's right. Meme, right? Early on, we thought, well, of course we won't carry this sermon series over into Easter because churches usually do more of a traditional, you know, resurrection sermon on Easter. But then it hit us. Then it hit us. It hit us hard. We have the perfect meme for Easter. So we had to. So we are going to preach to you today from a meme, all right? Now, don't, don't, don't get up and leave yet. Don't, don't. All right? Jesus Christ is still risen. And we're still celebrating the resurrection. All right. But, but we have this perfect meme. Let's see this meme here. No, not the eggs one. Not the bunny. No Easter bunny rabbit memes. No, this is the one. What if I told you? Look at somebody and say, what if I told you? This meme right here. Have you seen this meme? Raise your hand if you've seen this anywhere on the internet. Anywhere? Anywhere? All right. It's a screen grab of an actor, Lawrence Fishburne, from a 1999 film. Of course, that film is The Matrix. All right. Excellent. Good. The screen grab comes from a memorable scene in the movie where the Fishburne character's name is Morpheus, informs the protagonist hero, Neo, along with the audience, that there is something wrong in the world. There's something wrong in the world and that there is a knowledge that changes everything. And he offers Neo a chance to receive this knowledge or to walk away from that knowledge. So here's some ways that this uh, meme is used. All right. What if I told you standing up as soon as the airplane stops won't help you get off any sooner? Do we have that one up there? We don't have that one? Well, that's, that's one I've got written. It's not up there. All right, how about this one? What if I told you I don't care is not a restaurant? That one's really good. I'm going to, I would be tempted to use that in my family, but I probably am not going to do that. Right? Everybody says, hey, where do you want to go eat? I don't care. What if I told you I don't care is not a restaurant? What if I told you you read the first line wrong? Oh, read it again. What I if told you, all right, and then, of course, this one's just silly and an inside joke altogether. What if I told you I was Cowboy Curtis, and if you know who Cowboy Curtis is, high five to you, Pee Wee's Playhouse. All right, so I tried to make some for church people for this Sunday service. It goes a little like this. What if I told you that the church isn't a building? It's pretty good, isn't it? What if I told you? That with God, all things are possible. Amen. What if I told you, what if I told you the Bible wasn't originally written in the King James Version? Right. And what if I told you, you could celebrate the resurrection even when it isn't Easter? Amen, right? You'll come back next week. We're going to have this again. All right. Excellent. The resurrection of Jesus is an absolute, what if I told you? moment. We forget this as we become familiar with the story. Can I, can I just test you real quick? I want to see how familiar you are with the story. I'm going to ask some questions, and I want you to just shout out the answer if you know it. Jesus was beaten on his back with a... Very good, a cat of nine tails, also known as a whip, all right? Um, Jesus was taken from his disciples at the... Garden of what? Gethsemane. Gethsemane. All right. Good job. Y'all, y'all, don't be shy. We'll yell it out. Jesus was taken before what Roman leader? 
Pilate, Pontius Pilate, all right? What happened to Jesus' hands and feet? They were pierced. They were nailed to what? Uh, to a cross, all right? What did the Roman soldiers put on Jesus' head? A crown of thorns. Very good. What happened three days after Jesus died upon the cross? He rose again. Absolutely. What woman was the first to see a resurrected Christ? Mary Magdalene. Magdalene. Y'all are killer. All right. Very good job. All right. Not killer, but really awesome. What if I told you today it all happened just as it was written? Think about that for one moment. What if I told you that everything you've read about actually happened and it happened the exact way we read about it? Jesus was taken in the middle of the night. Jesus was put through a sham of a trial by the biased Sanhedrin. That really, really happened. Jesus was brought before Herod And Pilate, and he really stood in front of them, and he shut his mouth. Jesus was actually beaten, beaten so ruthlessly, viciously, almost killing him. Yet, he never raised his voice in anger or attempted to defend himself. Jesus walked through the city in a most humiliating fashion willingly walked to Golgotha, the place of the skull, Calvary. Wasn't drug, wasn't forced, willingly walked. His hands and feet really were nailed to a crucifixion cross. Jesus actually wore on top of his head a painful mockery, a crown of thorns. His blood was shed. Out of his side flowed blood and water. And he breathed his last. He was taken. And he was buried in a borrowed tomb. We we sang about that just a moment. The, The tomb that belonged to Joseph of Arimathea. That really happened. Roman guards were stationed at the tomb. To make sure that nothing happened to that body. But angels showed up on the third day. They rolled that stone away. That really happened. And Jesus really raised back to life. Jesus really is alive. What if this story that you're so familiar with. What if it really happened. And it absolutely happened the way it was written. There are plenty of historical accuracies in this story that you would at least have to say, well, what if, right? Even people that have trouble with faith would have to look at this story and say, well, there's a lot of things that that could be proven or disproven here. So let's look at them. If you think this story is made up fiction, I would ask you this. Did the man, Jesus Christ, actually exist? History says absolutely yes. There is no question about it. He absolutely existed. But, okay, was there a Sanhedrin? Yes, that is not a made-up point in the story. Oh, yeah, okay, so it existed. But what about the people in the Sanhedrin that were specifically named? Did they exist, and can we prove that they existed? Absolutely, every one of those characters can be proven that they existed. It's historically accurate. What about Pilate and Herod? If the story is made up fiction, then Pilate and Herod must be made up fictional characters, right? No. History clearly tells us that Pilate and Herod existed, just as Scripture wrote, in this location and at this time. Was there really a thing called a crucifixion? Would they really parade someone through a city and nail their hands and feet to a wood in cross? Yes, this is not fake news. This is absolutely the truth. History bears it out. We do not have a made-up story here. This is real. Was there really a tomb? History says there was 
a tomb. History says that there was really a man in the Sanhedrin named Joseph of Arimathea. History says that the body of Jesus Christ, the dead body of Jesus Christ, has never been found. Will never be found. Did Jesus really rise from the dead? Well, I got to tell you, everything else that we just went over is absolutely true, 100% verifiable, and yet people would question the resurrection. I get it, and I don't want to make you feel bad for ever questioning the resurrection if you're watching online or in the room right now. But I want to tell you, beyond history, there are many eyewitness accounts that were written by biblical and historical authors. So as you deny this story, if you deny this story, you're denying history. You are denying eyewitness. You are denying things that are written by people that wrote scripture, but also people that never wrote scripture. They were just historians. They weren't Christians. They just wanted to write down history. So you're denying them as well. But what if, what if I told you that it all happened exactly like it was written? There's so many reasons to believe the story. So do you believe the story? In your heart, come back to that place real quick. Do I really believe the story? And if I really believe the story, shouldn't it make a difference in my life? Is it making a difference in your life? Next, I want to tell you this. What if I told you that everything Jesus went through was for you? Everything Jesus went through was for you. All the abuse, pain, injustice, was something Jesus went through for you. If you want to turn off that phone, you can. It's right there. You're looking for it. I saw you. All right. All the pain, all the abuse, all the injustice he went through was for you. It wasn't that this horrible crucifixion happened to him. Come back to me. Listen. It wasn't that this cru- terrible, horrible crucifixion happened to him, you know how things happen to you? It is that he purposely went through it for you. Let's look at scripture. I'll show it to you in scripture. John 19 and 10. Do you refuse to speak to me, Pilate said? Don't you realize I have power either to free or to crucify you? And Jesus says in verse 11, John 19, 11, he says, Jesus answered, you would have no power over me if it were not given to you from above. He's stopping Pilate. He says, you think you are the one in control of this situation? You have the power to free me or to kill me? No, it is not you killing me. You're not the one crucifying me. He also said this in John 10, verse 17 and 18. He says these words. He says, I lay down my life only to pick it up again. Verse 18, no one takes it from me. He says, No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I receive from my Father. Do you realize that everything he went through on the cross was for you? It's not something that happened to him. It is a debt. It is your debt that he paid on the cross. It is something he purposely decided to do out of love for you. It was for your benefit. Everything he went through on the cross. One prophecy, one single prophecy, one single chapter of prophecy in Isaiah chapter 53 says this about what he did for you on the cross. He bore your pain and your sorrow. That's what it says. Your pain, your sorrow. He was pierced and crushed for your willful sins. He was punished to purchase us peace. And his wounds do what? They heal us. Everything 
he did on the cross. Everything he went through on the cross was for you. What if I told you that? Would you believe that? Would that change how you feel about God and his love for you? Would that change how you feel about this story? Is this just the story where you show up one time a year on Easter? Or maybe he's done these things for you. You ought to be walking in these things that he has purchased for you. This is not simply a story that you hear. It is truth that you receive and it affects, restores, heals, redeems, and it blesses your life. I want to bring this home to you that there are three points to a what if I told you. Here it is. Number one, it's usable knowledge. Usable knowledge. That number two, you should already know. You ever have usable knowledge that you should already know? And it's like, why didn't I know that? That's a what if I told you moment right there. What if I told you that you could actually use your blinkers in your car, right? I say that often on 75. It's, it's usable information that you ought to already know. Yet number three, you are not utilizing. Usable knowledge you should already know, yet you are not utilizing it. The story of Jesus is important, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Is it life-changing knowledge? Yeah. Can anyone else defeat death? Can anyone else save us? Can anyone else heal us? No. Is it life-changing knowledge? Yeah. Number one, it's absolutely powerful, life-saving knowledge. But the majority of people who will hear this message already know the story. The majority of people in the room... I. I'm pretty sure that the majority of people online, hello, you already know this story. I'm not telling you things about this story you have not already heard hundreds of times perhaps. We checked earlier if you were familiar with the story. You are all intimately familiar with small details of the story. I imagine the majority of people all over the world that filed into churches today. We're familiar with the story. It's usable information that we already ought to know, yet we're not fully utilizing its power. Usable information that we ought to already know, yet we are not fully utilizing the power of it. What if I told you if all it all happened as it was written. Go back to that idea. What if I told you it all happened as it was written? You know the story, but do you really believe it? Do you believe part of it, but not all of it? Do you believe that a good man died, but he wasn't necessarily the son of God? Do you believe that he died unjustly, but he wasn't raised from the dead? Do you live out this story every day? If, if it all happened as it was written, do you actually live out this story? And do you thank God daily for this story? How about this one? Do you share this story with other people? If I told you it all happened just the way it was written, and you don't tell someone about it, do you really believe it? Do you really believe it? What if I told you that everything Jesus went through was for you? I'm going to come back to that idea. You know what happened on the day Jesus died. But do you receive what he purchased for you on that day? You believe the account. You believe the story. But are you actually receiving the purchased promise of the Messiah? And are you doing it daily? Have you let him bear your pain and sorrow? He bore it for you. What are you doing still carrying that thing? He bore your pain and your sorrow. Absolutely. Have you turned away from your sin, leaving them at the cross where he was crushed and he was pierced? He was crushed and pierced for your willful sins. Are you still carrying your sins around? Have you left them at the cross? 
cross? Are you walking in the peace that he purchased as he was chastised? Oh my goodness, I know so many Christians that are not walking in peace. My goodness, how do you believe in the cross but not believe that he's got peace for you today. He went through hell so that you could live in peace. He went through the worst kind of mockery so that you could have peace. Everything, the pain, the torment of those nails was so that you could have peace. Do you have peace? If you're not having peace, then in a way, no one freak out and run away. If you are not living in that peace, it's almost as if he failed. Now, he didn't fail. It's not a failure on his part. But he did this so that you could have this. He did this, but you don't have this. Somewhere something is failing. You need to have peace today. You better leave this place with peace today. Some of you walked in with no peace. You're going to leave with peace today. Will you do it? Do it. Are you allowing his wounds to heal you? His wounds heal you. Are you allowing that? Heal your physical, heal your emotional, heal your spiritual, heal your mental, any area of your life that is hurting. He can heal. That's why he took the wounds. I do not understand Christians that don't believe in healing. There are Christians that came today and they read about the stripes that he bore on his back, but they don't think he still heals. That makes zero sense. You're denying the power of the cross if you deny the power of his healing. You're denying the power of the cross if you're denying the peace he will give to you. You are denying the power of the cross if you are still carrying your sin with you. You're denying the power of the cross if you are still trying to Bear your own pain and sorrow. Is there anybody in the house that is willing to not deny the power of the Christ, but, but to fully accept and receive the power of his cross today? Now, I'm going to be drawing to a close very, very soon. I want to challenge you to do something with this moment because we're in a moment and it's going to pass just like that. But before this moment is over, I challenge you to do something in the moment. What if I told you Jesus really died on the cross for you? Shouldn't that do something to you? Have you gotten to a place where that just doesn't affect you anymore? What if I told you he really was buried in a dark tomb? What if I told you the hope of the world was dead? What if I told you that he went down to hell and descended into that captivity that is hell? He went through that. What? I mean, does that do anything to you? Does it? What if I told you that he defeated death, hell, and the grave when he rose up to new life? Is that your joy? Is that your peace? Or is that not big enough for you? Like, that victory isn't big enough for you. You're really worried about this problem at work. Like, that is bigger than that victory of defeating death, hell. Do you see that? Or is that you? Is that you today? Can you not... Think about Jesus because of this huge problem and you are not understanding the proportion of his power and the proportion of your problem. The proportion is just get out of town because the proportion of his power is so much better than all your problems, than all your problems. What if I told you he really was nailed to the cross, that he actually felt every bit of that agony as he hung on nails that went through his hands and feet, that he pulled on them to get a breath of air. Your Jesus that you just sang about literally felt these things. He felt these things. Everything in him physically wanted to get off the cross. Just like everything inside of you, you touch a hot stove, everything in your body says, get away from that. Everything in him did, felt the very same thing, but he remained there for you. Does it do anything? Does that, hello, I'm trying to check for a spiritual pulse. Does that do 
anything inside of you? What if I told you that everyone turned their back on him? That no one testified for him? That no one tried to protect him and save him? That no one, everyone that he walked with, turned away from him in one way or another. I want to remind you that conversation in that movie. He told them that there is something very wrong in the world. Is there something wrong in our world today? Oh, yeah, look in any direction, you can find something is wrong. You don't even have to be a spiritual person to say you just have this feeling that there are wrong things going on in the world that we live in. There are wrong things going on in the world. Yet, there is a knowledge that changes everything. That knowledge is Jesus Christ. Do you believe that? Do you believe that today? I believe this knowledge about Jesus changes everything. Maybe you have never believed that before. Today's your day. Believe it today. Do something with this moment. Come talk to Jesus today because he's alive. Maybe you believed this in the past. Maybe there was a time in your life where you did believe that. I want to tell you, you need to come back to this powerful truth. You need to stir it up. You need to have a talk with Jesus that says, God, take me back to that place that was in awe of this story. Take me back to the place where I felt love for you and I felt love for other people and I felt that I was loved by God. And then the third option is maybe you do believe it and that's awesome. If you do, then you need to rejoice in it. You need to come talk to God and thank Him for the gift of His own Son. You need to thank Jesus for everything that He did for you on the cross. Here's one final, what if I told you? What if I told you the story is not over? The story's not over. The very same Jesus that we've talked about today is still alive. So guess what? His story is not over. Over And every time a soul receives this gospel story of Jesus Christ, it shows that the story is not over. Every time someone has their sins forgiven and that they are covered in the blood of the Lamb and they are now white as snow, it shows that the story is not over. And one day, this very same Jesus that was crowned with the crown of thorns, this very same Jesus that that was mocked with the sign that says king of the jews this very same jesus who carried a cross and was spat on and everyone looked away from him this very same jesus is going to return to earth with a crown of thorns on his head everyone will bow to him and declare that he is king of kings and lord of lords and no one will be able to look away from him because every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that he is the lord the story's not over jesus is Coming back. What if I told you the story is not over? Wherever you are in this situation, you don't believe, you used to believe, you do believe. Whether or not you're in one the boat of you've never had your sins forgiven. What, may, maybe you're in the place that, that, that you, have, uh, you have never received this gospel message and profess that you believe. Why don't you come today and do that? Maybe you do believe. Why don't you come right along with them and come to this altar? This very alive Jesus is in this place today. The story's not over. So that means this. If you need a miracle, your miracle's in the room because Jesus is in the room. And I want you to, by faith, I want you to walk into the first two feet of this altar today. If you need a miracle, we're going to pray for you. And I believe that Jesus Christ is going to meet your need. These altars are open. I challenge everyone to do something something with this moment. Come on, let's talk to God, Redemption Church. Come on, let's make a move to Him. Let's make a move towards Him. Come on, don't just stand around for this moment to pass, because this moment will pass. 
Reach out to the Lord in this place. Lord, I pray for everybody that, that has never come to faith in you yet. They've never professed that faith. Lord, I pray, Lord, that they would make a move towards you today. Lord, I pray, Lord, that they would talk to you and that they would sense the realness of your presence. Lord, and that they would confess that they believe in Jesus, in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for anybody that has trouble believing right now, that they, had, they have faith issues. In Jesus' name, I pray right, right now for them that that they would come back to the joy that is their salvation. That they'd come back to that place that, that they understand Jesus did it all for them. And that he has never turned his back on them in Jesus' name. And everyone else, Lord, let us come back into that joy. And let us come to that place of thankfulness to God in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you for all that you've done. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on. For more information about redemption, look us up online at redemption-church.com. We want to hear from you, so be sure to connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, or even our anonymous question text line at 214-856-0550. Thank you for joining us and have a blessed day.